Hello there, this is one up Indie and as promised, here is the video about where the channel is heading, what kind of content I will produce as a series in the future. So just take your time because this is kind of important. Here are some really, really hard topics I wanted to discuss because you guys chose the hardcore stuff, which are four points. So this will be some VFX stuff, shaders, physics, and the last level generation and search algorithm. So this is the most difficult one. Of course, I take out the right that, for example, if you choose one of those topics and the most people won't be watching that because they think like, ah, oh, it's cool, but nobody actually watched that stuff. Then I guess I have to readjust and then kill that topic because well if nobody's watching it then i'll only make five people happy but everybody else be like eh don't care so just take that into consideration so what is actually my first topic so the first one is hopefully you can pull it up vfx i guess this is the easiest one so what is the aim here because vfx just stands for visual effect and of course, I cannot really copy a Leech of Legends. Let's not kid ourselves. But I can of course try to do some fire, lightning, lasers, some sigils and auras. Or for example, let's say some weather effects. Or I can do some glows and well, maybe I go for Code Manus. So if you haven't um, had any of these products, pretty good guy. He has some really, really cool um programs which change uh, sprites and so on and so vfx and so on but here in this section if you choose for that we will play around with polygons particle systems and a little bit of course with photoshop or gimp because well some of these things are a mix in between and of course maybe and uh, i will use one of those uh, other additional programs which i'm going to show you and then we will create some interesting effects which are just eye candy and additional content just to make the game a little bit more round a little bit more beautiful so you're having some 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 stuff for example here let's say an aura like this or a fireball which could be recreated something i guess only with particle effects or this thing here so we can actually play around with that and this will be of course advanced stuff so not so easy content but still pretty interesting and beautiful effects and of course this is a benchmark I'm not gonna reach it but i'm gonna try and well take some notes from that and then we copy as much at least i can do and then of course let's say some let's say <laughs> enemy effects which i want to do so for example not just on a single object but let's say on the screen of course with different colors they i've seen like lots of lots of great stuff you've seen that in animes or let's say in some video games, so screen filling, particle effects, for example in Broforce you see this stuff. I definitely wanted to copy this quite a long time, so this is one of the things. So basically VFX is just some interesting and beautiful art which you're gonna see on the screen, full screen or just some specific, uh, around some specific objects or an object created like this, like a fireball and a lightning strike and so on and so on. So what is the next thing? So the next thing is physics and physics. The idea is behind that quite simple. First of all, I wanted to do kind of a game like um, Angry Birds. So we're going to clone a few things because we can actually do that with physics. So I will go definitely deeper into how physics work in Game Maker Studio. I will go into polygons and fixtures because this is the stuff i haven't touched on at all and then for example you want to have a slingshot then you need to understand forces and impulses because these things in the end do what they are supposed to do they give force and speed and so stuff flies around and of course there will be some advanced introductions then of course joints and joints is something like this so as you can see the thing is connected which is a physics object so thing which is driving so here 
I will go into the theory and of course the practical things. So we can actually do some joint things. Of course, we do not need to have a car, but of course, um, yeah, we can actually check out and I don't know what is this. I'm not sure. So basically, we will do some joining, and so you understand the theory behind it. So you can actually merge things together, or how they are linked, and then of course you can do and use that for puzzle effects, or stuff like this, uh, which is really, really cool. So here, you can actually copy this stuff besides uh, Angry Birds clone, of course, here, yeah, little motorbikes and stuff. And then at the end, and this is quite interesting, there is a physics particle system and that I will show you as well. So here you can actually simulate something like this. So um, this will be additional particle effects but in the physics realm of course this is then separate from the regular vfx because this is based on the physics engine but you can mess around and do actually pretty cool stuff so if you're interested in that just type in liquid fun by google and this is something similar to that so once we have that out of the way so this is the second choice this is still let's say difficult but not the most difficult one is less theory let's go into this thing no this one is the shaders so the next thing is a shader and here we will do quite a few things so first of all shaders are not too easy but here you can do quite great effects so if you decide to go for the shaders third option then i will start with the very start so for example color mixing so what you're seeing here inversion of colors or black and white or if you if we go later on and make a little bit more advanced then we can do blur but blur for example you do it normally the other way around the player is um, let's say outline of course this will be part of the the shader tutorial series as well then if you do the outside, let's say for example this is crisp, but the outside is blurry and this is a pretty neat effect which you see lots of, let's say, more beautiful 2D games and this is of course where you can use the blur and then well, I will show that to you. So my goal is that you can actually apply a shader to all kinds of well things, not just the full screen which I did most of the time, but let's say on a single instance where you have an outline like this even an outline glow and where you can have the whole screen of course or on a single uh, layer for example just this background layer and then blur the thing or pixelate it so this is another thing and well what can we else do maybe you want to have the bloom shader and bloom is kind of an interesting beast because it can do an make some pretty sweet effects of course you can use it for neon lights and blue is just basically taking very light colors and then making a kind of an overlay making a gaussian blur so they kind of expand from the original thing and what you get in the result is a kind of overlay which is just super super neat and it has some really cool effects for example here as you can see this is it even though maybe they don't have a radial um, around them, the bloom is actually doing this. So you get this pretty cool looking glow. And of course, well, on such a thing as well. And then of course, we can go into other things. Let's say a CRT shader. This is a relic from the past where you just draw every second line. But some people actually like this effect and want to see it in video games, even artificially, even though it's not needed anymore so this is a thing which we can do with shaders as well and of course that will be implemented too and the last thing which is definitely a difficult one which is the shockwave shader there you just bend your well the whole screen and then it appears that you have let's say a rippling effect and this is being used heavily in let's say fighting games or where you want to have an impact on your whole world and so it appears you kind of bend gravity which is definitely a cool thing and of course but well, outside glow and things and the last thing which i 
then maybe a zooming in so a lens something like this we can do as well or just basically a pixelate or distort it let's say with the heat shader which i already did but of course some other distortions which could be interesting for you guys so this is about the the third option the shaders which is definitely more difficult and now we come to the driest of all because that thing is a beast but if you guys decide for this hopefully you love math and lots of lots of dry theory because here I will go first of all through the search algorithms and then level generation in that order because if you understand how you can search stuff then you understand later on how you can actually populate and do algorithms on the other way around and create worlds depending what you kind of need so first of all I will go through the where are you easy deep uh, what is this uh, deep search and wide search so these are like trees and how you can actually find some stuff so this is a lot of times you want to go from point a to point b or you maybe want to find the quickest route from one point to the other point this is actually being used this is the a star algorithm this is actually being used for google maps so how you get from point a to point b and for example you have some distances and then you calculate the most optimal route and these algorithms are kind of interesting because they have lots of applications besides pathfinding for google you can actually use them in video games and i've seen that in cave places for the ai so this is kind of interesting then the diaxtra algorithm which is kind of similar to this one so this is again finding trying to find the most optimal way and then after we go through this theoretical approach because you will have to go and bear with me about this kind of things and then we go actually into the second phase which is the level generation and then we need to understand what biomes or biomes are so biomes biomes are just basically um kind of levels for example this is a sand level this is an ice level this is a god knows what tree hugging level and then you go through these things and then you create those different kind of biomes randomly and then well you have to apply some things so you just need to understand the theory behind that because there are quite a few things to understand here how you can actually create and populate your world randomly for that we need to go and understand first of all one of the easier ones which is the moving growing tree maze algorithm so this is just basically creating a perfect maze with start point and with an end point here and here or somewhere else doesn't really matter and then it will try and draw a cal calculate a new maze and for example this can be used and you have something like this or we go into the drunk yard the drunk ward uh, drunkard no, the drunkard walk algorithm so this is a random um, where this guy is drunken and he's just walking somewhere and then ending up somewhere on some other place and that thing is actually being used for nuclear throne so if you play that this is being used here and there is of course the second one which is called the random walk algorithm kind of similar so we will go into those ones then of course you can apply it to the game so here more theory than practical approach and then we have the cellular automation method which is great for making caves so if you want to have a level which has lots of open spaces then this is definitely something for you so if you want to have let's say a top-down game where you have lots of free space then this is definitely something good or we can go for the bsp dungeon generation and this is kind of an interesting one this is how it's creating some well, single places and then they are connected to each other and then of course you get i don't know this is how it looks in theory and this is one of the steps how it goes before and then of course then in the end you have those rooms and then they are interconnected so this is great for metroidvania games and then we go after if you if i haven't lost your attention uh, at this point if you bear all the math and all that stuff because that stuff is not easy so you need to be pretty good with math so 
here, just a little warning from my side. Then we go into uh, some hardcore, sh uh, I mean, <clears throat> some some really easy stuff, which is the whirly noise or cell noise or the pearl noise algorithm. And then you have an image like this and you create a word like this. So how can this be? Well, find it out if you get to this point, because this stuff is kind of powerful but it's definitely not easy to understand. So this is definitely not beginner friendly, but you guys chose with a slight minority, uh, well, the hardcore stuff and the hardcore stuff you will get. So hopefully that was of interest to you and now you know where you want to have your poll. After this video will be uploaded, you will see a new poll here where you can actually, uh, well, put in what you want because I give it like three or four days and then you can decide and then well a series will start then of course I'll, from time to time I will jump in with some easier lighter content let's say a review or something like this but mainly I will focus then on those things which well you chose so that was it for today have a good one one up indie